Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Goha Thakurta. What we're going to discuss today is the pernicious impact that social media has had in the recent past. Now, not everything about the social media is bad, far from it. But the fact is, over the last 12 months or thereabouts, at least 30 people, some would say more than 30 people, have died, have been killed. They've been killed by lynch mobs. They've been killed because there have been rumors that kid, children are being kidnapped, that they're sexual, sexual predators, that, that people are killing cows. So we see in India today the ugly side of the social media, the ugly side of WhatsApp, of Facebook and Twitter. To discuss this issue, I'm very happy to welcome Mishi Chaudhary. She's a lawyer based in New York and in New Delhi, currently uh, the legal director of the Software Freedom Law Center in New York and a digital rights activist. Thank you so much, Mishi, for coming here with us. Here is Prabhupada Purakaisto. He's also the president of the free software movement of India, besides being editor of News Click. Thank you, Prabhupada. Mishi, on the 5th of July, the Union Minister for Information Technology, Ravi Shankar Prasad, he says that we don't want to read into everybody's messages, but if in certain parts of the country, hundreds of thousands of these messages are being transmitted, then something is wrong. And he writes to and he tells WhatsApp that this is not rocket science. You can identify this. You can identify uh, by te using technology, by applying technology. Who are these people who are circulating these, mass circulating these messages? Sure enough, WhatsApp remains, replies very, very promptly to the minister and said, yes, we'll use machine learning. We'll identify what is happening. And this is very, very important. I mean, remember, that India has over 200 million users of WhatsApp. And, and in fact, it's the biggest market for WhatsApp. Your reactions, your comments. So <clears throat> I think in addition to that, what's, uh, Facebook, the parent company of WhatsApp, has also announced this crowdsourcing campaign, $50,000 for anyone who comes up and helps them with the solution to find this. That's great. You throw money at a problem and uh, you try to say machine learning will solve everything, like Mr. Zuckerberg in his television appearances in uh, the hearings in the U.S. Congress tried to say, um, for technology, everything can be solved by more technology, which is usually the response of tech companies. In the current WhatsApp case, um, so one of the very simple low-hanging fruit is that um, in messaging apps, you can create a group and you can add as many members to those groups as you like without asking for their permission. A strategy or at least a tactic used, to, used in a very widespread fashion by a lot of trolls. So in India, for example, a lot of prominent journalists are added to these groups without their permissions. Then pictures of their uh, close ones, like their wives or their daughters are put up, they are doxxed, and then profanities and threats of rape and things, uh, obnoxious things they in, would in say. In fact, recently a person has been arrested who claimed he was a part of the Bharatiya Janata Party. The BJP obviously promptly disowned him, mm -hmm. but he's actually been arrested. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the first, first case of its kind in India, but I'm sure there are dozens of cases that no, nobody's punished, yes. Right, and this, so they add them to these groups and there is no way to exit. Each time they exit, it becomes a whack-a-mole game. So a simple thing which a lot of civil society organizations ask WhatsApp, this is not a feature, this is a bug. Why don't you fix it? It's very simple. If I want to be added to a group, I should be asked my permission to be added to the group. No response whatsoever. Telegram and Signal have responded. Now, why, why I'm telling you this is because this leads and tells us what is behind all of this. Okay, I'm stopping you here. Uh, I'm going to ask Prabir to react to what he said. And I, 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 maybe you can add something because Ravi Shankar Prasad says, we welcome Facebook, we welcome Twitter, we welcome WhatsApp. You, 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 you must also make, make your work I mean, or make your platforms commercially successful, exact words used. But, and I quote the minister, you must be accountable, responsible, vigilant. 
And WhatsApp says, we care deeply about people's safety. And he said, yes, yes, we are working with Indian researchers. We'll run public safety campaigns. We'll launch a new label in India to help identify messages that are forwarded against messages written by somebody known. Do you think any of this will have any effect or these are just noises being made to placate the government? Let's put it this way. The first is, is Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad making these noises to placate the people? Well, the problems are elsewhere. The issue is not that we are having lynchings because there's a problem with WhatsApp. Of course, what to do with social media, I'll come to that later. But the fundamental reason why you have lynchings is because the law and order machinery has been complicit in these lynchings. They have not taken action for the last four years. Cow-related lynchings have been going on. Victims have been, cases have been filed against victims or victims' families, even Akhlaq, even today. His family was killed in Dadri, as you know. His family is suffering the consequences of fraud, false cases. So what the basic issue is that you create a climate of this kind where the law and order machinery does not act. Let's understand one thing. Evidence is forthcoming because videos are available. Messages are available. So investigation is actually easier if you have electronic trail, which this does leave you. So the question is, yes, Preventing may be more of a problem, we'll come to that. But investigation certainly is much easier with all of this. And the fact that nothing is happening on the ground on invest investigations and punishment is really the crux okay. of the problem. So, so, so Prabir, what you're saying here is that, yes, the don't kill the messenger. So the problem is the people who, you know, are spreading this poison or these hate messages through society. And the authorities concerned, the law enforcing authorities, the governments, if they're at best turning a blind eye or they are downright complicit in this kind of thing. Let's put this. As we know, the troll, bri troll brigade has been most active with the BJP. It has the most organized WhatsApp groups in the country. In each election, we have seen thousands of WhatsApp groups. And we've also seen this vicious campaign trolling right-wing propaganda, fraud or fake news, fraud news, whatever Communal you want to call it. propaganda, hatred. This is what has been prom promoted by the RSS and the BJP. Now that it is spreading from their targets into much more general population in terms of the child lifting cases, now they're certainly talking about that WhatsApp has certain and, responsibilities. And, and, and when their own external affairs minister gets trolled. getting trolled. Now, as Bishi said, and this is a very important point, a simple feature just takes two minutes to really implement. I'm sorry, you know, technologically, this is about the easiest thing you can do. That don't put me into a group without my consent. This should be a fundamental law that this cannot be done. And informed consent for participation should be at least a basic feature of any software right. that you put into the space. But then the businesses who want to use WhatsApp platforms to target the various users, they will not they be will. able to talk. So, and so this is related to again an advertising revenue because of which the WhatsApp founders, both Brian Acton and Jan Coombe, left Facebook and exited from the, uh, from the board of the parent company, Facebook, because there's a difference in how to monetize data. Now, if Facebook actually fixed this little feature, then the future part, the future then the plan, commercial potential would get, what should I say, diminished? In the bird. It's not going to even happen. Okay. So, no. Porajan, yeah, this yeah, is, I think, the most important point, that unfortunately, the business model of Google, Facebook, all these big digital monopolies, is fixed to what would be called virality. And therefore, they, if they want to monetize, which is what they really want, that's a business model. If they want to monetize, they want the ability to spread like a virus, right. therefore the virality. Okay. And this is why this is called surveillance capitalism. All right. Because this or, is the part of what this problem is. Or, or capturing the behavior. This are, these are behavior capturing platforms. Okay. You behave and I capture that, plat that behavior 
and then I make a trail out of it and then I'm able to sell psychographic profiles of people. And that's why the more you interact with the platform, the better it is for the companies who are running. If you stop interacting with the platform, which Prabil calls virality of this platform, then there's not enough behavior for me to capture, to build profiles and be able to sell it, whether it is for ad revenue. Or, or to a political party or for, for commercial gain. Yep. Now, Mishi, the point that Prabir made, what do you do when the purveyors of fake news, the trolls, the guys who are spreading this hatred and poison, what do you do when you find that the very people at the top in this case of India, the Prime Minister of India, they are following these guys. And they are not unfollowing, quote unquote, these same guys, even after there is a sufficient amount of evidence that these people are spreading false information, disinformation, fake news, hate speech. What do you do when a section or maybe a large section of the ruling dispensation is not just turning a blind eye, but appears to be complicit? Um, this also tells us that uh, the India India is actually a lot of times a microcosm of how all these platforms are being used in the rest of the world. Things have happened in India much faster and much earlier than the rest of the world. The 2014 elections taught a lot about use and misuse of these platforms, which at that time, when people like us would talk, nobody would pay attention, which played out in the 2016 U.S. elections. That when the people themselves who are supposedly to be taking care of it or, the, or watching or keeping a check on all of this are also complicit. There's a difference between, of course, political parties and the governments. And from what we hear, there's not just one political party, but everybody is now trying to monetize these platforms for their own election gains. The whole expose about Cambridge Analytica, mm -hmm. the deposition by Mark Zuckerberg, where he was asked would you like to tell us which hotel you stayed in, how much you paid for that hotel? Would you like to tell us who are the people you sent messages to over the last couple of weeks? And then sure enough, he kept quiet, but the whole idea was it was clearly told to him that, look, what you don't want to disclose to us, you are mining that data from large My numbers. favorite thing to say is when Mark Zuckerberg bought his new house before the two daughters were born and his wife because he wanted to have a family. He spent $30 million buying every house next to his house because they wanted more privacy. Privacy uh, is very good for yourself, very bad when it comes to general public. Double standards. Because I wouldn't even bother about talking double standards. I'm talking about essentially private greed. That is what militates against privacy because if you want to get money out of uh, other people's data, then obviously you are against uh, privacy in terms of what Facebook shall see of you. You see, it's also very interesting. A lot of this platform, Facebook to Google, are very strongly against so-called government intrusion. Of course, they have their links with the NSA and so on that we know by now. But they will always fight for that this should be kept out of government regulations. Free expression. But, but it should be available to us. And this is because the business model is entirely built on private surveillance or surveillance by private big capital. Okay. I think as long as the ad revenue is tied up with the data and collecting and monetizing data, then anything what we are going to talk about is just going to be some kind of a lip service. Because if your business model is about, I collect data and then I build profiles and then I'm able to sell them, then anything else is just going to be seen as some noises which are made. You know, these are today among the biggest corporations on the planet. The number of users of Facebook in India, according to certain estimates, have gone up from 136 million in 2015 to over 220 million as we speak. That is, quote unquote, the potential audience of Facebook in India is bigger than that of the United States. And this number is slated or estimated or projected to grow by to touch almost 300 million uh, by 2022. So when you look at India, the government of India and Facebook, what does this tell you? What, what, I mean, what does the ordinary citizen who, I mean, there's an entire generation of people who for them, there's no newspaper, there's no radio, there's no television. It's Facebook, it's WhatsApp. 
Yes. And so China is off limits to Facebook. So obviously all energies are going to be concentrated on, on India. That's why the entire free basics um, uh, rigmarole where they tried to tell how much charity they were doing for the poor Indians and the elitists were actually and, and, deprived. And huge that. advertisements to tell them how they what were so charitable. What the poor Ganesh would do with the Reliance and Facebook. So yes, the market is important. That's why so much of the concentration is being, uh, is placed on India. When you ask about how do we see government and Facebook in that regard. So, we, so when the Cambridge Analytica thing happened, so there are 87 million uh, people's data, which was linked by Facebook, 5.5 lakhs. I would use the other. I will use the different system of Indian users' data was also uh, leaked wow. in that. And what happens in that one was that each time somebody's data was leaked, their friend circle's data was also leaked. That's why even if you have small access to smaller number, but in large terms, you were also getting access to their friends and their likes. What happens? March in March of this year, we hear that Meti in its Anger has sent a notice, we will send a notice to Facebook, you should come and respond. Facebook says, we are very sorry. And, and Métis, for, for, we'll for, for the of of our, uh, viewers, Métis is, is a Ministry, of, Ministry of, Electronics of Electronics and, and Information, information Technology. technology. And Earlier it was a department, so we used to call it Deity. Yes. And now it's Métis. Deity to Mighty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good one. So uh, they send a very stern notice, give us a response, we will do something. Facebook says, uh, we are very sorry. We, will, we are looking into it. Privacy is very important. Data security is very important. We are, we are public safe, the, your, your data is most important. We're going to keep it secure. And uh, Mr. Zuckerberg says that um, in the US Congress hearings, that not only are the midterm US elections of uh, this year important, but they're going to be large, very important elections in India next year and in Brazil. And we are going to do everything to make sure those elections go smoothly. Now that what, also, what do you mean smoothly? And, and there are things he? like I exactly. So when 2014 elections happened, I was very I was intrigued that Facebook was going around. First they wanted the Obama like um, I voted button, but that didn't work in India because Indians we get ink. Yeah, that's here. right. You so get people that. started Indelibly. taking selfies. But they wanted to say 164 Lok Sabha seats will be impacted by use of social media. Now that's a large number. It's not a small so number. Out of 543. Just let's look at it. What is it really? Ha what's really happening? Cambridge Analytica showed us that elections can be modified as it or were. influenced. Mm -hmm. Well, whatever okay. word you want. Manipulated. Whatever manipulated, <laughs> manipulated <laughs> modified, whatever, can be done through social media. Specifically, Google and Facebook are the most powerful ones. Google through its search engine and Facebook because of its, uh, obviously because people are immersed in Facebook, their they lives hooked. are now on, they, lives they are they now addicted. on Facebook. So the base issue was that Cambridge Analytica was getting some data, only a partial set of this data, and using it for targeted election campaigning and switching, shall we say, a small number of voters, percentage is two to four percent from one side to the other. This is called targeted campaign, micro which is uh, micro-targeting, which is also what's done in, you know, in terms of advertisement. This is the edge Google and Facebook have over, say, newspapers or television. Now, what is the charge that Cambridge Analytica did it? But what about Facebook? That's what right. about Google? So the effect or the what we are really talking about is people are saying, you great Facebook, if you do it, it's still okay. You know, after the big God, you know, the God of Facebook has done it, it's okay. But Cambridge Analytica should not do it. So you have shared your data with Cambridge Analytica. That is the original sin. Well, in my view, and I'm sure it misses, the original sin is the model itself, okay. which is Facebook. And Facebook and Google or any of these digital monopolies being able to influence the thing. The last point I would like to make, you see, which is what the government says. For instance, Mr. Uh, as you know, the IT minister, Ravi Shankar Prasad. Prasad, made all this noise. Mr. Zuckerberg, this is the IT minister speaking. Well, Mr. Zuckerberg didn't really respond, didn't come. And he didn't really heed Mr. the IT minister, but he kept quiet after that. I mean, the IT minister. Let's understand one thing that's happening, that when a new media comes, and for a lot of people in India, the electronic media is new. They're reaching it only through their, uh, now through their, through their uh, cell, phones. cell phones. So there is this belief that if news comes in my 
platform like this. It has, in to, my, be it has to be true. And if you remember, Paranjay, maybe you were young enough to remember this. When we were young, we were told, if it was printed, it must be true. <laughs> in Bengali, there is also... Times of uh, India, the, that time. The, the, there was a word, there was a sentence, which is chapar okkuri lekha. So it is actually as if it's written in stone. Of course, Ananda Bazar Putrika did that for the Bengalis. We realized the okay. chapar okkur could be, yeah, could right. be wrong. Prabhi, <laughs> sir, Prabhi, <laughs> Prabhi, Prabhi, I'm going to come back to you. You're going to have the last word. But Prabhi, you know, Facebook's global manager, politics and government outreach, Ms. Katie Habath, she recently had a meeting with the chief election commissioner, Mr. O.P. Rawat, and she said that Facebook would track these false campaigns. There would be some sort of a automatic fact-checking mechanisms, a self-verification. How uh, seriously do you take her, her reported sort of assurances, especially since the next general elections in India are scheduled for April, May of 2019? And where do you see what's going to happen in the next eight months or thereabouts? You know, I have worked for a large part of my life on what are called heuristics, what are called, you know, statistical techniques for basically my professional work, okay? Let me tell you something. All these techniques cannot distinguish between what is fake and what is not. It's a fundamental issue that this is something which human beings cannot do it. Computers learning from us is not going to be able to do it. So I think this is basically just soothing noises to protect their business empires. And we are willing to be convinced because we have vested interest in willing to be convinced. Today to shut down Facebook as it stands is going to be difficult. The, fun the fundamental issue the world has to address, how do we control digital monop monopolies of this okay. scale, A, B, that if they are today playing the role of public institutions, which they are globally, what is the regulatory control the world has over them? Because fundamentally, adding a feature to Facebook's WhatsApp is band-aid be, as best. Should be very, no, no, it is, it is something which should be very simple to do. But what is the law we have in our hands to do that? That's the question. And unfortunately, national governments, including the government of India, is not willing to exercise the law, the power of the law it has over these companies because they think they don't want to annoy this big digital monopoly. I, I would say uh, a little bit differently. I also think that there is this view of c complete control. One of the things which, um, which is about the data localization, they would like all data to be stored here. Government of India has can access if required what for China any legal purpose. No, it, what China has done, but they otherwise also, government of India can access and subpoena or ask Facebook, we want data for such and such criminal uh, investigation. What is subpoena? Uh, sorry, they can summon and ask that this is the information we would like actually. Um, and please provide it. They have the legal power to do it. But they would like now to say, no, bring all your servers, all Indians data has to be stored here. I think that's mostly because there is some extrajudicial arm twisting which the governments really want to do with the companies and to collect that data. That means that the companies always can play all sides and say, look, if we, if we do that, then we are also are the people who are going to be getting on the slippery slope and enabling political censorship. Now, uh, and, and that's why they play the masses to say, look, anytime anyone tries to control us, they're trying to restrict your free speech and expression. And on, on the issue of um, on, on how the, what, what do we do with the companies? I, I will remind, we are only in 2018. 2007 is when iPhone was released. And all these apps afterwards on mobile have actually blown up. It's only now people have just began to wrap their heads around that what a Frankenstein's monster this actually is. You know, there is the law, you're a lawyer. There is the issue of ethics. There's what's happening in the globe and these cartel of big players who want to control uh, what you read, what you watch, what you hear, and in the process, making all the big bucks. Where do we move Boku from bucks. here? In the short run, what? A lot, Boku bucks as they would okay. say. Okay, so what, what can be or should be done in the short term, say, till the next general elections and the bigger, larger problem. Prabir. 
Well, the short term is existing laws. There are there is enough teeth in existing laws mm -hmm. to control fake news, provided you have the will to implement, implement them. And I don't think the issue is about law in this case. If there's a lynching, there is both law outside the electronic realm, in the physical realm, as well as the electronic realm. So the cr realm. Indian Penal Code, the Criminal Procedure yeah. Code, the as IT, well as the IT, IT, IT Act. IT Act and the IT rules are adequate for this if you have the will to do so. As, we, as you said earlier, there is enough digital trace you're leaving for what you're doing. So in fact, it becomes easier to prosecute, even if it is more difficult to prevent, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that is one part of it. I think that we have reached a level where we need regulation of global regulation, national regulation of this monopolies. And fundamentally, to me, if this public infrastructure, which I believe it is, that it should actually be in public hands. Okay. So how do you implement this? How do you break up this monopolies? If they did it for AT&T, that, it's a, a bigger it's a much issue. bigger issue. That's not a 2019 issue. 2019 issue is telling the government you have the powers, don't fool us in telling us that you don't have the powers, you have enough powers, exercise them for Christ's sake, right. you know, and that's what you're not doing. Okay, the last word from you. Um, I agree um, that uh, the larger things, whether they are the com competition issues or how do we actually view these companies, that's not going to be solved by 2019, April or whatever. I do think that they can create a lot of educational awareness about the fact that everything which comes on WhatsApp is not gospel and you don't have to believe in all of that. There isn't any of that awareness campaign going on. The second thing is that uh, more information from independent actors that there is no political party which is not using these platforms to actually impact not only your conscious mind but your unconscious mind also. If you see from the UP elections, what we learned was that a lot of voters told us that, you know what, sometimes I don't believe what's come up, but when it's spammed to me 50 times, I think maybe there is a grain of truth in all it's, of it's this. It's propaganda. You exactly. repeat that lie a hundred times and then you start believing. And then you're like, hmm. So it's traditional techniques. Only, oh, the, right. only the delivery medium has changed. And that should not tell us that everything which we have learned over centuries somehow is now invalid because we've introduced internet in there or phone in there. Those principles still apply. And I do believe that this large Twitter sets the narrative now for a lot of things which we discuss also okay. on uh, electronic media or otherwise. That's why it's incumbent upon the users to demand that the companies do something. The government stops beating around the bush and makes a lot of noise and just say, okay, these are the big issues we have to address and we are otherwise helpless around it. Okay. And not believe the companies that artificial intelligence, machine learning, and throw a few other buzzwords and they will solve everything. All right. Thank you so much, Mishi, for coming here, giving us your time, giving us your views. Probi, thank you very much for throwing light on what I believe is a very, very important issue, an issue that com concerns the youth of this country, concerns all of us. And thank you very much for being with us on this program.